Hey everybody, Donnie coming at you. I'm out here in Loosedale, Mississippi with my buddy Phil and his wife Marcy and my wife and we are at Thomas O'Brien's farm. Some hey of you buddy, guys, here. you may recognize <laughs> old Thomas. Uh, if you do not, definitely go follow Thomas. I'm gonna link uh, in the description to Thomas's YouTube channel. He has an awesome sawmill, an awesome farm. Um, we're gonna get some incredible footage of milling up a huge pine log, uh, a cant for Phil today. Um, but I wanted to show you guys this tractor <laughs> that uh, that Thomas has, Massey Ferguson. 2705E. Uh, 2705E, crazy good size tractor. Um, tell us a little bit about this so thing. So it's a 49 horsepower tractor. Okay. It's an economy series tractor from Massey Ferguson. It does not have all the bells and whistles, but what this tractor can do, is it will lift a whole lot and it weighs a whole lot, which is good. And my operation with the sawmill, this is really what I need. I needed something that can lift more than any other tractor out there. It yeah. didn't break the bank. Uh, this tractor, you can get this tractor under $30,000 with a front end loader. And I actually got the box blade and a set of forks or anything. Uh, it's a phenomenal tractor. Again, not all the bells and whistles. Yeah. It does have a Shiburu diesel, four cylinder diesel engine on that. Okay. That does not need a diesel particulate filter. So somehow oh, really? it's it's cleaner burning and stuff like that. It does have a diesel uh, catalytic converter, but there is no diesel particulate filter. So there's no uh, regen cycle to have to go oh, through. Thank goodness. What um how much will this thing lift, you think? Uh so the books will say about twenty eight hundred pounds. That's if you keep it within right, the right, range right, of right, uh, right. Working. <laughs> uh, I can guarantee you I've lifted 3,200 pounds of this with well, easily. Because we talk about it here in a little bit in the video. I mean, you have one log here <laughs> that is like 5,000 pounds yes, of a live oak log. Mississippi live oak, right? And extremely dense. Extremely dense, extremely hard. If, uh, if any of you guys ever turned or cut or worked with live oak, it's craziness, man. It's absolute craziness. So that uh that tractor is awesome it's it's a must-have right yes. i mean you, if you're gonna have a sawmill you need to have a tractor otherwise you're just gonna be wearing yourself out there's there's no reason not to have a, a tractor if you're gonna have a sawmill unless you have someone that can load on the logs for you but really right. that's you want to be self-sufficient yeah so. yeah yeah i mean and that's just not i mean that's just yeah not time wise or anything like that mm -hmm. Speaking of sawmills, we're going to head over and take an awesome look at this uh, Timber King sawmill that Thomas has and uh, get a few get a few specs on it and see how awesome this thing is. Okay, here we are over at the awesome uh, Timber King 2000. And um, I've seen this machine work once before. We came and actually cut. So let me, let me pull around here. This is some cutoffs of what we cut earlier <laughs> and a cutoff of what was cut the first time we were here with Phil. But um, man, tell us tell us a little bit about this because I mean this thing's pretty this thing's pretty nice. Yes, so Timber King 2000. This is a for real commercial mill. This is like their first. Uh, if you really get up into the commercial grade mills, this is the first step. So Timber King has the 1220, which is all manual mill. The 1400, which is a manual mill with essential hydraulics that head up and down stuff like that. Then you've got the the new. They call it now the 1620. The 1620 is kind of a mix between a manual and a hydraulic mill there's a few things on it it does have manual log sweeps and it does have a uh a, a log dog in and out and everything but it's not up and down that's controlled manual and everything so the 2000 which the new model is now the 2020 i don't know why they chose 2020 for the name but whatever 2020 is a crappy year but 2020 <laughs> is the name of the mill uh this is the 2000 so this mill here it comes with two options you can get a gas version uh uh, there's there's two options for the gas. You've got the standard, I think, 28 horsepower Kohler, or you can upgrade to the 37 horsepower uh, V-twin fuel injected Kohler. It's got a lot of power. I opted out to the diesel because everything I run on this farm is a diesel. Uh, my sawmill, my generators, my tractor, my truck, everything's diesel. So they don't mess around when they put a diesel engine on there. That's a Kubota four-cylinder D1505. Uh, time tested proven tractor engine that they have on their industrial engine they run these engines on all sorts of applications from generators to tractors to uh pumps to all sorts of stuff it, it's a time trust time tested engine and with it being a four cylinder just like the tractor being a four cylinder it's naturally balanced you don't have a three cylinder uh engine that's a little bit off balance the four cylinder engine just got loads of power it's detuned because of all the uh emission stuff but it's it's 24.8 horsepower, 
However, it's 90-ish foot-pounds of torque. Wow. So what this allows you to do, and some of the gas folks will, can attest to this too if they've seen this, you can enter into a log at a pretty good clip and you can maintain that. You don't have to slow down as you're cutting. You still listen to the engine tune, but odds are you can probably speed up on your dial control when you're going through that log because it's just got loads of power. But this is a fully hydraulic mill. It has tow boards, it has your log dog in and out, up and down, and it has your log stops. The, my favorite thing on this mill, there's two, three things really I love about this mill. My number one favorite thing are the vertical log stops. There's only offered on a few mills, but if you've ever worked with any kind of wood that has lots of knots and branches, which mm -hmm. is what I do in my line of work, my money logs are the, the crazy looking things that have the crotch and this, that, and the other. If you have sweeps, that's something to catch on. Those vertical log stops are, are definitely key. Uh, that being one of my favorites. Secondary is the computer. The computer system on the sawmill, uh, it makes it where, I mean, you don't have to think. I, I know every single time it's going to be within a sixteenth of an inch, and I feel very confident uh, that it will work every single time. Every so often I will reset the computer to make sure I'm, I'm back at home or what the known reference point is, but for the most part, this thing stays true. I've, I've had to reset home on this twice, I think. So this thing will actually... It'll do like a CNC machine and it'll, it, it knows beginning, end. It doesn't know beginning, end. It knows, so it's, it's, everything's in the vertical direction. Okay. All the forward and back is done manually and everything okay. with the control. I say manually, it's, it's hydraulic right, right. controls. And there are no solenoids or anything like that. These are direct drive control, uh, hydraulics. Oh, wow. There, there's very few sawmill companies that do that. It does, I mean, there's probably $6,000 of hydraulic hoses in the sawmill, but since it's all direct drive, you know there's there's little room for air for right, mess up. Right. Uh, you don't have any solenoids yet to go through. But what you do is once you set a known reference point, you do the auto saw down once you get on your scale. It measures from the top down or you can measure, measure from the bottom up, knowing that that first or last board will be your throwaway board. And then you just start slabbing through it. So uh, it really, it takes all the guessing out. If, if you're looking at an inch scale and you're trying to guess on a sawmill, you have to consider the curve of the blade. It does all that for you. You don't have to think about any of that. So <laughs> nice. it takes out the curve of the blade. Nice. Now I will say this, if you're cutting a 12 by 12 cant and you want to cut it into two by sixes and you think in your head, 12, I should be getting 12 two by sixes. Well, if you cut a 12 by 12 cant, you put it on the computer and you're cutting true two inches, you're not going to get 12. Right. You're going to get uh, 10. 10 and some change. 10 and some change because of the, it takes into consideration right. the curve. Gotcha. So there's, there's different uh, mindsets on how you actually get your cants set up. Right. And, that's something you just learn over time. But so, but but like you said though, now this this is a this is a true production yes. uh, sawmill. I mean, yes, I mean uh, anybody in their backyard can own this because obviously yep. they'll sell one to anybody they have. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, I mean, this is a pretty high end mill. Have you had different mills besides this one? Yes, I've had. Uh, I started off my father-in-law's Timber King twelve twenty, which is a fully manual mill. Then when I moved to Mississippi here. Uh, back in 2016, I bought a Wood Miser LT15 with a diesel engine. Again, the, the theme is everything with a diesel. Yeah. Uh, then after that mill, I ran that mill for about 10 months and realized I needed to upgrade to a larger mill. Then I bought a Timmer King 1400 diesel, of wow. course. And that actually has a Kubota three-cylinder diesel on there. It runs a little bit higher RPM, 24 horsepower, a little bit less torque, but a phenomenal sawmill nonetheless. Uh, I ran that mill for... 10 months. <laughs> uh, and then Man. I, uh, then I, I, I actually, so the first mill I gave to my dad, then I got the next mill. And then once I got this mill, I gave my dad my 1400 mill, right, which right. is up in Tennessee. And now how long have you had this one? I've had this mill since uh, last December. So, oh wow. So 10 months, 10 months. So almost. does that mean so 11 months? So does that mean there's a new mill coming? We are talking to Timber King currently <laughs> on getting, oh, I, what I would like to do, we're, we're, we're at this crossroads right now. My dad just retired. Okay. He's got my 1400 mil and he realizes after seeing this mill cut and what it can do, Yeah. he needs a fully hydraulic mill. Of he's course. too old to, of course. to be beating up his body Absolutely. at the age he's at. Absolutely. So I haven't decided yet if I'm going to give him this mill and then we sell the 1400 mm -hmm. and I am going to either buy the 2020, which I'm so opposed to that name or the 2200 right so i might be getting the 2200 right which comes with a 49 horsepower kubota diesel engine right so right. and that one will have uh some emission controls it will have a diesel particular filter and stuff like that which i'm not oh, i'm not too okay, okay well it is what it is yeah but uh it is 49 horsepower and in, instead of running an inch and a quarter blades you can run an inch and a half blade you can run an inch and a half blades in this as well with a different string uh spring tensioner setup um but it is a true, I mean, if you want to cut cross ties, 
like and send out 18 wheeler loads of cross ties each week that's yeah. that's the mill to do it gotcha. this mill will do it too but the 2200 and the 2500 which are their super and jumbo commercial mills that they call them, i think it's pretty yeah. funny uh they will produce some stuff gotcha gotcha cool all right we've checked out this awesome sawmill let's get phil's uh uh uh, pine cant on here and let's see if we can cut some boards out of this thing and one more note you know ty, uh this timber king every time i look at it i want to say tiger king and that's just indicative of 2020 right i think i would have timber king by carol baskin written on that thing or something but anyway let's get to some sawing show y'all from back here in the control center isn't that crazy now you can see this thing's got a little bit of a twist to it but they're gonna straighten it out and uh they're gonna make some beautiful boards on this thing here in a minute i believe he's gonna go around push it forward just slightly uh, or push it towards the cutter head and uh, about five inches away Whoa. That's good. getting him close here to see how much room he's got down here to cut and then he can uh, take off some length down here <clears throat> to make the full cut now he did say they make a 20 foot extension for this thing uh where you can do just crazy long stuff and um and it comes with like uh all the hydraulic cables and all the things you need to make it longer but he said it's like 12 fifteen thousand dollars so yeah that's that's crazy let's uh let's see if they're gonna cut this thing off and uh hopefully get it lined up let's check it out Give me a little bit stronger platform if I brought it down. Yeah. But let's measure it when I got it down and then I go from there. down you can see it lifts up on that side that's it what does it what i thought we'd do is we kind of go right off the top of it yeah and cut the top and, and it rotate it over. yep that's perfect how many, how many boards do you need to get out of it i only need yeah. like four okay <laughs> so after we get them cut if we can flip them up on the side and cut the the dark off the edges yeah yeah, yeah. edges okay because i think i think it's uh i don't have tape with me but it seems I like it's one. 12 one way and 13 the other okay yeah we'll, yeah, we'll skim it and get all that stuff off. Okay. Just under a half, and that one's 11. 11 and a quarter. Now that's that one section there. It could be great. We ought to rotate it and make the boards as wide as possible. No, we are we are cutting it with as wide as possible. So if we flip it over and cut the boards, then we should end up with an 11 and a quarter, maybe 11 inch Man, board. We're gonna lose it down there, though. Yeah. Oh, well, not or, take the back. We're not gonna lose it down there. Um, hold on. We're at just under eleven and a half, and this one's just right at eleven and a quarter. So we are cutting the the widest. Right. You want to keep it as wide as possible. Yes. Okay. So let me. I'll I'll look cut down the length of it and see where I'm clean. So we'll take one board off the top, 
That'd be kind of throwaway board. Yeah. And then we'll do the same thing on the bottom, and then we'll start going from there. Right. To tell you the truth, I mean, this right here, the edges, you won't be able to see really much. I mean, if you want to maximize, or we can trim them up, it don't matter. We at least, I'd like to trim them up. Okay. I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a uh, one by two across the front. Okay. All right, then yeah, I'll do. So then, if I'm at, we'll shoot for trying to get, uh, it does have a twist in it. We'll just see what we get. Yeah. So you're not looking for a specific dimension. Okay, easy. So did you ever Clean. think you just take a log, back it up to a sawmill and just throw it on there and start cutting? Um, apparently that's not what happens. You actually have to think about what you're doing. Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> to, or get, to get wing it. To, <laughs> or just wing it. And then you ruin. And ruin a whole bunch of lumber. But um, what you call a practice log. Yeah, a practice <laughs> log. But I have, I have faith in Thomas that he's going to uh, rock this thing out. It's... Uh, it's crazy how it's just not as simple as you think it is sometimes.
a log, I mean, here it's binding up. Rather than have to let off on your hydraulic lever, which is kind of jerky, you can kind of slow it down with the speed control. I mean, you're always listening to the tune of the engine. If you start binding, slow it down. Otherwise, you run the risk of blowing blades. I always look at my pressure. If I'm operating by below 500 psi, then I'm pretty safe. If I start spiking above that, I run the risk of blowing the blade. But I know I'm pushing too hard at that point. I've got a gauge there and also the gauge on the mill head. Once it gets down there, you can't see it. Now we got a train going back. Hey you guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, the sawmill footage today. I had an incredible time out here on uh, Thomas's farm, watching that awesome Timber King work, watching the uh, Massey Ferguson load the logs up. And uh, man, this thing made a pile of lumber. Just, I know that was a big log. I know it was a big cant, um, but man, it just made some incredible, I mean, look at this stuff. I mean, just made some beautiful logs got it all strapped down ready to go and uh yeah it was a fun time out here today so i hope you guys and gals enjoyed i hope you guys enjoyed uh today's visit out here to the sawmill at thomas's house make sure you subscribe like and share this video with everybody and be sure to go check out thomas's youtube channel He's always sawing some incredible stuff, and uh, you guys will have fun watching him, and uh, we'll be on the lookout for that new 2020 sawmill. And uh, until next time, I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for joining in. So we're going to be on our fourth mill. <laughs> Is that bigger than the nine? Yeah. That's a 2200? That's a 2000. Uh, okay. It'll do 35. We're about to buy a 2200. All right. Here's a good one for you. Hold up. My hook? Nope. Wow. Let's see if Donnie knows what this is. The color's no. the big giveaway. <laughs> it's marble. It's the hardest thing. Uh, Osage orange? It's Osage orange. Yeah. That's uh, cutoffs from, I did a job the other day.